The convert entities command is a staple in every SOLIDWORKS user's repertoire of tools and features for creating CAD models. It's often one of the first sketching tools introduced to students after basic geometry and dimensioning, and it's a great way to establish robust design intent. But it's not always the simplest tool to use, especially when working with complex or heavily patterned geometry. And we've had several questions from the community regarding not necessarily how to use convert entities, but how to use it efficiently within difficult designs. So get ready to level up your sketch game with Ask Solid Professor. Here, just no, not here. Yeah, yeah, on. Try turning it off and back it. on again. Here, try this. No, oh, yes, there we go. That wasn't too bad. To get started, we'll briefly cover the basics of convert entities. But if this is the first time you're hearing about it, we'd highly recommend checking out our SOLIDWORKS Essentials for Part Design course, which covers convert entities along with several other closely related tools in much greater detail. Convert Entities allows you to convert existing geometry into a new sketch, including any existing edges, faces, or even existing sketches. Converting Entities also comes with the added benefit of creating unique on-edge relations, which means that if the original source geometry that was converted is ever updated, the sketch will update as well. This can be really important for maintaining good design intent and ensuring your models behave as you want them to when you make design changes. Let's take a look at a very quick and simple example. Here I have an ultra basic block and a cylinder, with the goal being to create a hole in the block that always matches the size of the cylinder. I'll start a new sketch on the top face of the block, click convert entities, and then click the circular edge of the cylinder. You could use the face here instead if you prefer. Clicking OK will then project that edge down onto my sketch surface as a new sketch entity with an on edge relation. I'll make a quick extruded cut with this sketch, simple enough. But the important part comes along when I edit the size of the original cylinder. Notice the hole automatically updates. This is the main purpose of the convert entities command, and offset entities behaves very similarly. One other really important thing I want to mention before we move on is that I used the term projected earlier when describing how the new sketch was created, and this is an important detail. Here I have another cylinder at an angle to the block, so how will convert entities work here? You'll notice when I follow the same process, I instead get an elliptical shape, and this is due to projection. Essentially, when converting geometry, you're going to get whatever that geometry looks like according to the normal perspective of the sketching surface. Notice if I show hidden lines and rotate normal to our top face where we're sketching, it lines up perfectly. That's projection, and it can be particularly confusing to new CAD users. Alright, let's get on to the more complicated stuff. During actual design work, faces usually aren't as simple as our block and cylinder example, and often contain what are known as inner loops. Using the shield as an example, the outer face contains several of these inner loops which we may or may not be interested in converting. So how do we control that? If I simply convert this face, I only get the outer profile. If I want the internal loops, such as the circular profiles of the decorative rivets, I can select the edges directly, but this can be a pain especially when there are many of them to select. I've only selected a few here and I'm already annoyed. To get this done more efficiently, we can select the outer face like we did originally and then take advantage of the Select All Inner Loops button that becomes available. This will select all of the internal edges and group them into loops, which we can add to or remove from if needed. Now I will admit this is not always perfect because it includes the outer edge of the original face along with some inner loops that I don't necessarily want, but it's certainly a lot faster than selecting each edge individually. If you know which of these loops you don't want, you can simply remove them from the list before you click OK, but if you're having a difficult time seeing which loop is which here, you can always just run the command including everything, and then remove whatever you don't want from the resulting sketch. And by the way, I should also mention that if you have more complicated inner loops with multiple edges, such as this star design in the middle of the shield, consider right-clicking one of the edges instead of left-clicking. The select loop option that appears in the shortcut menu will automatically select all associated edges and if the edge is shared by multiple loops like this one is, you can click the yellow arrow that appears to toggle the loop you'd like to select and this has saved me a lot of time in the past. Now let's quickly cover the other options available in the convert entities dialog which take the form of toggleable checkboxes. The first option, select chain, may seem to do nothing at all, and this is actually true if you're converting existing edges or faces, but remember, convert entities can convert existing sketches too, and that's where select chain has an effect. When enabled, clicking a single sketch entity will automatically select the entire contiguous loop, potentially saving you a lot of time. 
The inner loops one by one checkbox is another helpful tool that can speed things along. It allows you to select individual loops of edges, much like the select loop option available in the right click menu. This option splits the difference between the extremes of selecting every single edge individually, which is of course very slow, or selecting all the inner loops at once, which can end up selecting too much and require cleanup. Now selecting loops is faster, but can still be precise with selections. Lastly, the four construction checkbox just turns the converted entities into construction geometry, which can be useful for any number of reasons. Now, those of you with experience using convert entities may have noticed that it's not currently possible to use the window select function while the command is active. Though this is a limitation, it's possible to pre-select entities you wish to convert prior to running the command, and this can save you some time as well. Unfortunately, it would seem that trying to pre-select entities using a window select is impossible, but we have a trick up our sleeve. This is where selection filters come in handy. Pressing the F5 key brings up the selection filter toolbar, where you can enable filters to restrict your selections to just edges, faces, or any number of other entity types. For this example, I'll turn on the edge filter, and you'll notice that I'm now able to window select many edges at once. In this case, I've selected both the inner and outer loops of the star design in just a couple seconds. And with a single click of the convert entities command, it's been projected to my active sketch. You can also combine window selections by holding control and window selecting a second or third or however many times you wish. So consider using these selection filters and pre-selection methods for more complicated designs, but don't forget to turn them off when you're done with them. Our final scenario is more or less obsolete now that we have the Select All Inner Loops button, but that time-saving button didn't exist until 2016. So while this is more of a history lesson on how we had to do things back in the day, you can probably find some excuse to use this technique even now. Let's say I'd like to convert only the outer edges of these drafted debossed features, avoiding the inner edges. Today we can just select the main face, click Select All Inner Loops, delete a couple unnecessary selections, and we're good to go. But what if we didn't have this button? I can try using the pre-selection technique with a selection filter on, but that's going to capture all the inside draft edges as well, defeating the purpose. The workaround used by the CAD philosophers of ancient times involved creating a copy of the face or a group of faces containing all the edges to be converted. This can be done using the offset surface command and setting the offset distance to zero. You'll even notice the name of the command changes when you do this. The result is a discrete surface body, containing only the outside edge loops, and then isolating this body, we can enable the edge selection filter once again, pre-select all the loops with a window select, and convert them. Again, this technique may not be quite as useful now as it once was, but perhaps you'll find it useful for something else down the road. If you made it this far, thanks for sticking with me to the end. I hope you found something useful, and if you'd like to see even more use cases for convert entities and all the other tools it's typically associated with, be sure to check out our SOLIDWORKS Essentials for Part Design course over at solidprofessor.com, and consider subscribing to the channel for new CAD tips and tricks every week. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.